I'm a commercial filmmaker, and this is a look at the process behind making a series of social recipe films for drinks brand Chase. Between non-disclosure agreements and creating the sort of work that I think you, the good people of the internet, would be interested enough in for me to share, I've been struggling a bit this year. But thanks to Benji Jackson, a general all-round legend who was assisting on a two-day drink shoot for vodka and gin brand Chase a couple months back with my friends at Detail Films, I have all this behind-the-scenes footage to use, so it makes sense, I guess, to talk about this one. Producer Helen, Will of Detail Films' right-hand lady, reached out to me asking if I was available for some dates to shoot a series of no less than eight recipe films, delivering in 916, one by one, and later on adding in the additional 5-4 delivery as well. She sent me over a brief and asked me to put together a treatment for the job. This wasn't a, this treatment is going to win me the job treatment, as the job was already awarded to Detail as a production company based on their past work, combined with help from a senior producer who they often work with, who'd gotten them in the door with the brand's social agency. So there was no selling of myself or winning as such to be done from a directing standpoint. I was just asked for a few pages telling them a bit about the location we were looking at shooting at, talk about the existing social videos they were keen to reference, but ultimately we ended up making nothing like. Sharing a couple of creative ideas of my own, the client then ended up taking a handful of their favourite ideas to incorporate. The brief outlined that we were going to shoot this outside, as the brand's tagline is inspired by the wild. Shooting outside always makes me nervous. Living in England, it's dangerous at any time of the year, but particularly with the late start to the summer we'd had in 2023. There's no guarantees of the weather and lighting control is tricky, especially with our limited resources of kit and crew. I had floated the idea to producer Helen of shooting on a cheap-ish poor man's sort of volume wall here in London that I discovered on another recent job and going heavy on the art department. But to make it look half decent, it was going to be out of budget, even if we could have managed to convince the client. Before we had culled our eight videos down to six ahead of the shoot day, I shortlisted all of them and we had them all storyboarded. I also made notes and approximated what frames per second I thought each shot should be captured at, as there were going to be a lot of slow motion. I didn't want to be this rigid with the shooting approach, particularly with how tight timings were going to be on the actual shoot. But the clients wanted to see it all and it was helpful for us to cover ourselves and make sure that everyone was going to be on the same page knowing exactly what we were going to be shooting. And then if we decided to improvise any alternate shots on the day, at least we had the boards to fall back on knowing they'd been signed off with the client beforehand. There were more than a handful of Zoom calls with the agency and client in the run up to the shoot and plenty more that detail had to field outside of that. Having been pushed back twice due to rubbish weather, the shoot took place on a beautiful farm location in Oxfordshire. I'll link the location in the description if any fellow filmmakers would like to shoot there. On the crew to make it all happen was a remote producer because last minute Helen had to be across another job simultaneously, a director, cinematographer, Will, who was also doing way more than his fair bit of producing as it's his production company, a first AC, gaffer, spark, mixologist, the on-screen hands, drink stylist, runner, five agency, and two clients. The biggest challenge outside of the weather was always going to be time. Even though the films were all under 15 seconds, it was a lot of shots to get for six films in just two days. And on top of the shot list, we were going to be moving for each recipe as the client wanted a different background for every video. So we had to factor in time for that too. Filming on a rural 60 acre farm is very different than shooting in a location house or studio. It was all hands on deck from all of us on the crew, lugging around camera kit, lighting control, product, props, tables, chairs, a generator, and even a freezer between locations. They were full on exhausting days physically. We had to drop plenty of nice to have shots from the boards. And after the third attempt at my drink point of view rig, in an effort to catch up on serious faff time, we scrapped it for the other recipes and didn't actually end up using it in any of the final edits either as it felt too out of context with the style of the rest of the footage that we had shot. In the evenings, back at the farmhouse where three of us were staying whilst others were split between hotels down the road, Will was backing up footage and I was catching up on edit amends from another job I was juggling. Both days, the three of us at the farmhouse started before call time in an effort to get ahead of ourselves and make sure everything stuck to the schedule. On a job with as many shots to get as this one, 
If the budget had allowed, we could have really benefited from a first assistant director with us. Helen and I had worked on a schedule ahead of the shoot based around where the light would hopefully be at that time of the day in relation to that location, which we tried to stick to, but it ultimately had to move around as locations were changed once the client had actually seen everything in person. To keep track of things, I had the storyboards laid out simply in the photo reel on my iPad and would cross shots off as we went through, always making sure to confirm the client and agency were happy before moving on. Overall, we were super lucky with the weather. A few moments of rain and some cloud waiting, but for the most part, we were very fortunate and blessed by the filmmaking gods. One thing that I was not so lucky with, and this is your three second warning to look away if you're remotely squeamish, is this. After wrapping on the second day, when the agency and client were already on their trains back to London, I was helping to pack one of the kit vans. Perhaps a little too hastily, as I was also keen to get back home with three more shoot days still lying ahead of me before some rest, when a large metal loading ramp fell out the back of the van and opened midair onto my ring finger, which, after several visits to the doctor and eventually an expensive visit to the plastic surgeon for some surgery that may or may not work, will never look quite as beautiful as any of my other fingers again. My days of hand modelling over. For the post, Jess, details in-house editor, did a rough assembly of all the recipes and made a start on sound design before I got involved, spending time tightening, adding titles, digital zooms and moves, doing as much within Premiere as possible so I could quickly replicate and tweak moves across the sequences, after which followed a fairly typical for this type of job, semi-excessive amount of amends, tweaks, tightens and versioning until everyone in the chain was happy with everything. After some slightly complicated layer organisation due to the split screens and overlays in the edits, everything then went over to colourist Damaran to be finished off. A big shout out and thanks to Benji for the behind the scenes footage. Of course, thank you to Detail Films and thank you for watching. And if you want to learn how it goes down behind the camera at a ton of other shoots, then you need to check out this playlist. And make sure to subscribe for more semi-helpful tips and interesting insider industry knowledge.